families, I'm Katie, and I am so happy to have church with you right now. Raise your hand if you love puppies. <laughs> I do, I do. If you got a new puppy, what would you name it? Maybe Coco, Tiger, or maybe Cheesy Poof. <laughs> that would be so fun. Let's learn today's point. Every day, I can trust Jesus. Now let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Every day, I can trust Jesus. Great job. Now it's time for our everyday song that talks about that. Stand up so you can sing and dance along. is called the Transfiguration. Jesus and a few of his disciples went up onto a mountain, and when they got to the top, Jesus transformed right in front of their eyes. He was glowing like a bright light, and they heard the voice of God talk about his son Jesus and how pleased he was with Jesus and that we should listen to him. Jesus goes on to talk about his death and resurrection just after the Transfiguration. When he talks about this, he's showing us more about the way his kingdom works. We're going to be talking about what this means a little bit later. If we're going to be a part of this new kingdom, it's going to require some trust. That's why today we're saying, every day I can trust Jesus. Before we talk about that, we're going to sing a song together. So go ahead and stand up and sing this out with us as loud as you can.
got a brand new sound So get everybody talking Yeah We won't stop We won't wait We'll stand and sing Our Savior's name Our Savior's name Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out Jesus is alive right now Couldn't beat him, nothing could hold him down Our God conquered the grave So come on now, make it loud Everybody shout it out Jesus is alive, right now Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out Jesus is alive right now Whoa. Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out Jesus is alive right now sounded so good. Thank you for singing along with us. Now we're going to take some time to watch a Bible story together. And like I said earlier, today we're going to be looking at the story of the Transfiguration. So let's check it out. It's time for a Bible story. This story happened about 2,000 years ago when Jesus was here on the earth. One day, Jesus went up to a high mountain and brought a few of his disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. Nice, going on a little hiking trip, huh? See the great outdoors, climb a mountain, maybe do a little fishing of men, get it? Yeah, I get it. But that's not why they went up onto the mountain. It was way more important than just a hiking trip. Jesus wanted to show them something incredible. When they got up to the top of the mountain, Jesus' appearance changed. The Bible says that his face shone bright like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Whoa, I hope they brought their sunglasses or they'd be all like, my eyes. Yeah, sunglasses weren't really a thing back then. Right, they probably just got all squinty then, huh? Probably, but then something else happened. Two other men appeared before them and started talking to Jesus. Wait, 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 hold up. Who are these guys? Where'd they come from? The other two men were Moses and the prophet Elijah. Whoa, wait a minute. Weren't those guys around like way earlier than Jesus was on the earth? Okay, you're getting my timelines all mixed up. This is some straight up infinity war, time traveling, next level multiverse stuff. Calm down, it's not that complicated. Yes, Moses and Elijah were both alive a long time before Jesus was on earth but they appeared on the mountain with Jesus that day. Okay, what happened next? I bet Peter, James, and John were totally amped to see that happen. They totally were. In fact, 
Peter wanted to build three memorials right there on the mountain. One for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Classic Peter. But right after he said that, something else happened. A bright cloud covered them and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Wait, was that God's voice that said that? You got it. Oh man, that would be pretty powerful to hear. Oh, it definitely was. When the voice of God said that about Jesus, the disciples fell face down on the ground, terrified. Well, yeah, I've done that just when my mom calls my name from across the house. I know, right? Especially when they use your middle name. That's when you know it's game over. Okay, so we got Jesus shining like the sun, Moses and Elijah hanging out, glowing clouds, the voice of God. What happened next? As the disciples were on the ground, Jesus came up and touched them and said, don't be afraid, get up. When they looked up, everything else was gone, and it was just Jesus standing before them. Then, as they traveled down the mountain, Jesus instructed them not to tell anyone about what they saw until after his resurrection. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, I've got a few questions. Understandable. And so did the disciples. They asked Jesus about what they just saw, and Jesus helped them understand that it was just a glimpse of what would happen in the future. He would come back one day in his glorified body and bring about a new kingdom on the earth. Dude, that sounds incredible. I can't wait for that. Yeah, me neither, dude. The end. Peter, James, and John got to see something absolutely incredible. Our friend, Pastor Andrew, is going to be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now, so let's take a look. In the story of the Transfiguration, we see Jesus going up on a high mountain. And on this mountaintop, we see him, the king of this new kingdom, transformed right in front of his disciples. He's glowing and then talking to these heroes of the Bible. They hear the voice of Almighty God. He said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. And then he says, listen to him. The very next thing Jesus said was, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. He's showing us that the way his kingdom works is through death and resurrection. Now, when I talk about death, I'm not necessarily talking about the blood and guts kind of death, but a different kind of death. Think of biblical death as separation, like being removed from something or giving something up. So right here, I've got Maggie. Maggie is three months old and super cute. And like any puppy, she loves to play and chew on stuff. She especially loves to chew on bones. So right here, I've got this smaller bone. Let's see if she likes this one. Yeah, I'd say she likes this, don't you? But what if I have something else for Maggie? What if I have something even bigger and better for her? Now, do you think she'd like that big bone more? Yeah, of course she would. But before Maggie can have the big bone, she has to give up the little bone first. Let's see if she'll make the trade. Okay, Maggie, we know you like the small bone but let's see if you're willing to give it up for the bigger one. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, give Maggie a round of applause. Now, when Maggie gave up the little bone, it's kind of like she died to this small bone. She was separated from this bone, but she was willing to give it up because she knew that there was a bigger and way better bone waiting for her. That's kind of like a resurrection. There are going to be plenty of times where we'll need to die to something, give up something because we love Jesus. Maybe it's a bad habit, an attitude, or a friendship that we need to separate from. And sometimes that can make us uncomfortable. But here's the good news. We can always be confident that when Jesus tells us to give up something, to die to something, it's because he has something better for us we can always be confident to die to something for Jesus. How? Because this is what Jesus did for us. He actually physically died on the cross and he actually physically rose from the dead to make a way for us to be a part of his new kingdom. Jesus did it all first. Every day, we can trust Jesus. 
When we follow Jesus, there are times that we have to lay down or separate from some things. But this is always followed by a resurrection. Is there something that Jesus is asking you to separate from or lay down? I would encourage you to talk with your parent or small group leader about that. Remember, every day as we lay these things down, we can trust with Jesus there is always a resurrection. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. We've already learned a lot, and now we get to learn a Bible verse. I'll say it first. Psalm 51.10 God, create a pure heart. ba bum ba bum And me, 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 me. <laughs> now I'll say little parts, and you can repeat them after me. Are you ready? Okay. Psalm 51.10 God, create a pure heart. Ba bum, ba bum. In me, 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 me. Great job. That verse reminds us that God can create a pure heart in you that wants to obey Jesus. When He asks you to give up something, He's ready to help you. I had a great time having church with you. Now I'm going to leave you some questions to talk about with your family. When they pop up on the screen, just pause the video and have a little chat. See you later.